welcome to our bedtime story time. I hope you've had a good Monday. I know it was nice outside. As soon as I finish with my um, story here, which I think we might get to finish. I don't know. I think we're going to finish it. Um, but then I'm going to go outside. It's getting a little cloudy now, but I'm hoping that I can still go out on my bike. Um, but anyways, I hope that you enjoyed your one social emotional lesson for the day. We will hopefully finish Dustboro tonight. And that means that tomorrow we can go back to Harry Potter and pick up where we left off all the way back on March 12th. So um, just to recap what happened with our friends in the dungeons and the deep downs, um, Despero went down to save the Princess P. He dropped his spool of thread. It fell all the way down into the dungeons, which was the way he was going to find his way out, leave it there and then follow it back. But the rat Botticelli Remorso saw the thread at the base of the stairs. He's planning on tricking him somehow, we know. And he says that he trusts him. He'll take him down through to the Princess P. So he does get there. He takes him to the princess where they find Miggery Sow and um, Roscuro, the rat. And finally, the Princess P asks Miggery Sow what she wants. And she says she wants her mom. And that's what the princess wants too. And um, so anyways, <laughs> where we left off, oh my gosh, this chapter. Was that really short chapter 50 that says that the rat was going to kill, um, Rascuero was going to kill Despero. And Mig says, don't worry, princess, I will save the Misi. And then she took the kitchen knife and she aimed to cut off the rat's head, but she missed her mark. And so the famous last words on Friday were, whoopsie. So we're going to see what did she chop off because she chopped something, but we don't know what she chopped. Chapter 51. What is that smell? That's like... <laughs> Never a good way to start like any chapter. That's <laughs> what does that smell? Unless it's like, what does that smell? Ow! Screamed Roscuro. He turned to look at where his tail had been. And as he did, Despero drew his needle and placed the sharp tip of it right where the rat's heart should be. Don't move, said Despero. I will kill you. Ha ha ha! Botticelli laughed from the sidelines. Exactly! He slapped his tail on the floor in approval. Absolutely delightful. A mouse is going to kill a rat. Oh, all of this is much better than I had anticipated. I love it when mice come to the dungeon. And here is the picture of Despero holding his sword, his needle, up to Roscuro saying, I will kill you. Can you see it? Look how small he is. And look at how ugly Roscuro is. I thought he was going to be a good guy in the end. We never know yet. Let me see, said the other rats, pushing and shoving. Stand back, Botticelli told them, still laughing. Let's let the mouse do his work. Despero held the trembling needle against Roscuro's heart. The mouse knew that as a knight, it was his duty to protect the princess. But would killing the rat really make the darkness go away? Despero bowed his head ever so slightly. And as he did so, his whiskers brushed against the rat's nose. Roscuro sniffed. What is that smell? He asked. Mousy blood, shouted one rat. Mousy, no, blood and bones, shouted another. You're smelling tears, said Botticelli. Tears and thwarted love. Exactly, said Roscuro. And yet, there's something else. He sniffed again and the smell of soup crashed through his soul like a great wave, bringing with it the memory of light, the chandelier, the music, the laughter, everything. All things that were not, would never, could never be available to him as a rat. Soup, moaned Roscuro, and he began to cry. Boo, shouted Botticelli. Sss, hissed the other rats. Kill me, said Roscuro. He fell down before Despero. It will never work. All I wanted was some light. That is why I brought the princess here, really, just for some beauty, some light of my own. Please, shouted Botticelli, do kill him. He is a miserable excuse for a rat. What a traitor. What was that word? Perfidy. What perfidy? Because, I mean, he's one of his kind. He's another rat. You'd think that he'd stand up for him. And he's like, kill him, kill him. No, Despero, said the princess. Don't kill him. Despero lowered his needle. He turned and looked at the pea. Boo! 
shouted Botticelli again. Kill him! Kill him! All this goodness is making me sick. I've lost my appetite. Gore! shouted Mig, waving her knife. I'll kill him! No, wait, said the princess. Roscuro, she said to the rat. What, he said. Tears were falling out of his eyes and creeping down his whiskers and dripping onto the dungeon floor. And then the princess took a deep breath and put a hand on her heart. I think, reader, that she was feeling the same thing that Despero had felt when he was faced with his father begging him for forgiveness. That is, P was aware suddenly of how fragile her heart was, how much darkness was inside it, fighting, always fighting with the light. She did not like the rat. She would never like the rat, but she knew she must what she must do to save her own heart. And so, here are the words that the princess spoke to her enemy. She said, Roscuro, would you like some soup? The rat sniffed. <laughs> Don't torment me, he said. I promise you, said the princess, that if you lead us out of here, I will get cook to make you some soup, and you can eat it in the banquet hall. Speaking of eating, shouted one of the rats, give us the mousey. Yeah, shouted another, hand over the mouse. Who would want him now, said Botticelli. The flavor of him, or the flavor of him will be ruined. All that forgiveness and goodness. Ugh. I, for one, am leaving. Soup in the banquet hall, Roscuro asked the princess. Yes, said the pea. Really? Truly, I promise. Gore, shouted Mick. Soup is illegal. <laughs> but soup is good, said Despero. Yeah, said the pea, isn't it? The princess bent down before the mouse. You are my knight, she said to him, with a shining needle, and I am so glad that you found me. Let's go upstairs. Let's eat some soup. And reader, they did. Chapter 52, Happily Ever After. But the question you wanted answered, I know, is did they live happily ever after? Yes and no. What of Roscuro? Did he live happily ever after? Well, the Princess P gave him free access to the upstairs of the castle, and he was allowed to go back and forth from the darkness of the dungeon to the light of the upstairs. But, alas, he never really belonged in either place. The sad fate, I am afraid, of those whose hearts break and then mend in crooked ways. But the rat, in seeking forgiveness, did manage to shed some small light, some happiness, into another light. How? Roscuro, reader, told the princess about the prisoner who had once owned a reddish tablecloth, and the princess saw to it that the prisoner was released. And Roscuro led the man up out of the dungeon and to his daughter, Miggery Sow. Mig, as you might have guessed, did not get to be a princess. But her father, to atone for what he had done, treated her like one for the rest of his days. And well, what of Despero? Did he live happily ever after? Well, he did not marry the princess, if that's what you mean by happily ever after. Even in a world as strange as this one, a mouse and a princess cannot marry. But reader, they can be friends. And they were. Together they had many adventures. Those adventures, however, are another story. And this story, I'm afraid, must now draw to a close. I think there's a second book of Despero. I'm going to look that up. I think there's another one. And, like I reminded you at the beginning, this is going to be a movie on Disney Plus eventually. But before you leave, reader, imagine this. Imagine an adoring king and a glowing princess, a serving girl with a crown on her head and a rat with a spoon on his, all gathered around a table in a banquet hall. In the middle of the table, there is a great kettle of soup. Sitting in, place, in the place of honor, right next to the princess, is a very small mouse with big ears. And peeking out from behind a dusty velvet curtain, looking in amazement at the scene before them, are four other mice. Mon Dieu, look, look, says Antoinette. He lives, he lives, and he sees, and he seems such the happy mouse. Forgiven, whispers Lester. Cripes, said Furlo, unbelievable. Just so, says the Threadmaster, Hovis, smiling. Just so. And reader, it is just so, isn't it? The end. And so here we can see the king and the princess P and the tiny little Despero and Roscuro the rat with the cutest little grin on his face and Miggery Sow eating soup and then the four other mice on the side watching them eat their soup. So can you see? Oh, here we go. So 
here are the mice looking on. And there we can see, oh, my eyes, my fingers on the king. Here we go. There's the king. And there's Desper on the pea. And then, eh, the crook. You can see ooh, Miggery Sal and Rescore the Rat. Can you see that look on his face? <laughs> he looks so happy. So kind of, there was a happily ever after. Coda. A coda happens at the end of a book. It was kind of like a P.S. Do you remember when the Des Do you remember when Despero was in the dungeon, cupped in Gregory the Jailer's hand, whispering a story in the old man's ear? I would like it very much if you thought of me as a mouse telling you a story, this story, with the whole of my heart, whispering it in your ear in order to save myself from the darkness and to save you from the darkness too. Stories are light, Gregory the Jailer told Despero. Reader, I hope you have found some light here. Oh, I know I have. Look at little Despero. <laughs> then there are the acknowledgments to the author's family. And then it looks like this book was written before um, Kate DiCamillo's famous book called The Miraculous Journey of Edward Tulane, which I have here actually at my house. I was hoping that we could read it. Oh, look, it's going to give us a, a preview of the next book. But I think that that book has some sadder parts to it from what I'm told. So I will read it first. I will see if we can read it. Um, and we already know that tomorrow we're going to go back to Harry Potter. So for now, we finished Despero. I am going to look up to see if there's a part two because I love this book so much. I hope that you guys have had a... Oh, it's going to be a motion picture. So it's not even going to be... Um, on Disney, it's going to be a big movie once it comes out. So I hope you have a great evening. I hope that you are having a great Monday and I will see you tomorrow morning for our morning meeting.